When you first start with LumaFusion, you want to look at your project settings. That's under the gear icon here. And under the settings, you can see the current project settings. I've got a frame rate of 59.94. This was some GoPro footage that I had actually filmed it. I thought was 60 frames per second. Turns out it's technically 59.94. The frame aspect ratio is 16 by nine. That's what we're used to in the HD television world, that shape. But if you wanted a different shape, you can tap on there and you can see it supports uh, vertical, square, four to three, widescreen, and even 360 video here at two to one. Pretty powerful stuff. I'm just gonna do some standard HD video here. So I'll leave it at 16 by nine. And then the background color, black is the classic background color for film. Fade to black, black is fine, but if you want a different choice, well, that's where you make it. And then there are some defaults for how the media will be prepared by default. When you drop a photo onto the timeline, you can adjust how many seconds there are. And you see these little arrows to the side? You can just tap by seconds, or you can swipe here uh, and go into smaller increments. I like a photo to be dropped for something like mm, four seconds, maybe. Um, now, when you're doing photos four seconds, that's a good starting point. You may be doing a slideshow where you're putting a bunch of photos on the timeline, putting some music or narration, and you can adjust it right here under the settings. Titles, these are text elements. They're called titles in the video world. So a title card, for example, is just type against you know a colored screen, or typically black. Um, and how long many seconds those will be shown is also here. And then transitions. So default transition. Ducking. Ducking is a special topic. I address that in a whole another area of this course. But basically, just so you know what it is, it's the ability to have the music um, come up or down in volume depending on uh, the strength of someone talking. Basically, it's used against narration. So on the pauses, the, you know, the, the swells of the orchestra come back up and then they come down in volume when someone's talking. Don't worry about that for now. We'll show you that uh, in a separate tutorial. And then if you come over to preferences, now these are gonna be like the global uh, settings in the, in the earlier version of the app, it was called global settings. So if you want your, uh, you know you're gonna be working in 25 uh, frames per second because you're in Europe or 30 frames per second because you're working with smartphone footage, you can change those here. Um, so when you're by default, you'll be set up for 16 by nine, 25 frames per second, and so on. Um, number of project backups to keep. Okay, that's gonna depend on how much memory you've got and how well you manage your media. Um, by default, it's right now keeping 19 backups. Interesting. And the clip style, this is about the user interface. How do you want your clips to look? Normal is the default. You can have it uh, have no icon and no waveform as options, depending on your editing style. Show touches, those are what these blue, that's how we're getting the blue dots here. Uh, whenever I touch the screen, you can turn that off. It's really good for doing tutorials like this. And then reverse frame step gestures. What does that mean? Well, let me show you what it means because let me turn it off because it's off by default. I'll show you why you might want to turn it on, at least if you think like I do. Those touch gestures are up here. So I'm moving forward here on my timeline with the touch bar, and every time I move from left to right, it moves forward seconds and frames, right? But if you do this in the preview window where you can move one frame at a time, it does just the opposite. So guess what? That drives me crazy. So I actually prefer under preferences to reverse the frame step gestures so that when I'm scrubbing to the right, I'm moving frames to the right. When I swipe to the right, I'm moving frames to the right. It just makes sense for my brain. Maybe your brain's different. That's okay. They give you that option. And under, under advanced settings, this is going to be how high quality you want that preview to be. Um, I just keep it at balanced. It works pretty good for me. If I was going to the external monitor, I might go best, you know, when I'm close, when I'm probably, you know, looking at the final, final version of, of my edit later on in the process. And then ripple track, 
ripple the main track for transition insert. So when you put an insert in between two clips, it'll ripple, it'll move back. Yeah, it's, it's not important. Just keep it on for default right now. You can turn it off if you don't like the look and you want to see what that looks like. And then what type of uh, format do you want for snapshots? Because when you make freeze frames in this video editing app, they're called snapshots. So you have to make a snapshot and then you can save it into your sources and then you can add it to your project. So uh, it works a little differently than, than on the desktop if you're using Premiere or Final Cut. And then finally, cleanup. This is going to be how temp files and cached media are managed. And you have a number of options there. What's really nice is you can see where your cached media is, whether it's in your photos library, whether it's in your, your cloud, or um, a wireless drive that you may be using, a Narbox, a WDs, a Western Digital. And you can manage those as you go. And of course, there's help. There's more uh, available from LumaFusion, customer support, and so on. So those are your main settings, and that's how you're going to get started uh, with your project. You can always change your project settings after, um, after you put some media on the timeline, so don't worry.